Welcome back. I recently had a chance to interview Betty White, and Betty White, as we know, is one of the great golden girls, and we know her from the Mary Tyler Moore Show and game shows and stuff like that. But, like many great old-timers of her era, at least, she began her career on the radio. So I asked her to tell me about those days on the radio. Here's Betty White. <laughs> Easily. That's a cinch. If they wanted somebody to holler, good morning, or wanted crowd noises, or somebody to say, Merry Christmas, that was me. <laughs> And it was just a case you'd go around on casting day when they were casting radio shows. And if they saw you often enough, they'd think, well, we might as well hire her. We must have used her. I see her there all the time. You're only waiting for a job. What were some of the shows? Ready? The Great Gilder Sleeve. Great Gilder Sleeve. And uh, this is your FBI. I had a, a pretty good one right. episode thing because they were expecting the other Betty White. There were two of us. <laughs> and I walked in, and at that time, I hadn't been suddenly struck blonde. So uh, this brunette walked in, they said, oh, but we were expecting a blonde. So, well, why would they care on the radio? Well, but she was a working actress and a oh. very well-known actress, and I was just a neophyte. But it was too late to do anything about it, so they said, well, I guess you can read it. So to this day, Betty and I are still friends, and she says, you still owe me a job, <laughs> you son of a gun. You stole a job from me. So what did you think of television, the very early days of television, this new invention? Wow. Yeah, when you go around looking for a radio job, they'd say, no, we, I'm sorry, we don't have any radio jobs, but we are doing a television show. Can you sing or dance? Or if they had asked me if I could juggle, I'd say, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, it didn't pay anything. You did it for free, but it was a wonderful showcase. So that's, that's how I started literally the same time television started. I want you to explain how you created that character of Sue Ann Nivens on the Mary, Mary Tyler Moore Show. Mary and I were friends. Alan, uh, uh, my husband, Alan Ludden, and Grant Tinker had been deep friends for years. And he took me to meet Mary and Grant when we first started going together. So the four of us were close friends. And they were looking for a... One day the writers wrote a script about a yucky, terrible television, sicky, sweet person. They said kind of a Betty White type. And the casting director said, why, didn't, why don't you hire Betty? And I said, we can't. Mary and Betty are friends, and if, if it doesn't work out, it might be awkward. We didn't know anything about that. Well, they tried to find somebody, and they couldn't find anybody really yucky enough. So they said, all right, we'll give the part to Betty. It's a one-shot anyway. Well, it was a thrill. It was fun because we had all sweated out the show as friends, mm -hmm. but not everything he had work on it. And somehow the character caught on, and in two weeks they had written another script, and I was back in two weeks. That was fun. Now, what about the... Uh, there were two things. Sue Ann Nibbins was kind of a sex-starved person, and A, Alan Ludden said, Betty White is like Sue Ann, uh, 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 Sue Ann Nibbins. Tell us about that. Oh, everybody would... Uh, naturally, no. the first question to him was, how close to Betty is, is this neighborhood nymphomaniac? <laughs> you know, the, she was a rotten person, but a wonderful home economist. I mean, she was good at her job, whatever else she wasn't. So he'd say, well, Betty and Sue Ann are exactly alike, except Betty can't cook. <laughs> and he was close to the truth, I thought. I didn't realize, I, because I have kind of a, a body sense of humor, always right. have had. So it was sort of fun to, to play that side of Sue Ann. Where did that body sense of humor come from? My father was a traveling salesman. Need I say more? <laughs> he'd come in off the road and he'd bring all his stories home. I was an only child. And we'd all laugh and say, they'd never explain them to me. If I didn't catch on, that was my problem. No one got embarrassed. Now, on Golden Girls, you have said that it's a very harmonious group of women working together, and it's not bitchy. This is my question. Is that unusual in a situation like this? I tell you, I, I have lucked into the Mary Tyler Moore show and now Golden Girls when yeah. it was such a happy set. And I'm sure a lot of sets are, are happy. You just hear the horror stories of the places where people aren't getting along and where people are discontented and we all stare at each other and say don't let this go away this is just too good let's appreciate it while we've got so it, it is kind of well, Rose honey what are you still doing up studying for my Spanish test like somebody else I know should be don't strain yourself here answers to the test. Where did you get these? I'll give you one gift. You slept with the teacher. <laughs> of course I didn't sleep with the teacher. You have to be very careful these days. I promised I would if he'd give me the answer. I call it faith teasing. 
Well, you can just have them back. I've only cheated once in my life, and I vowed I'd never do it again. Couldn't handle the guilt, huh? No, I got caught. <laughs> oh, it was the worst experience of my whole life. St. Olaf was rocked by the scandal. What'd you do, shortchange somebody down at the feed store? <laughs> Worse. I fed BBs to my prize lamb, Harlan, so he'd weigh in heavier at the county fair. Let's talk about courtship. Alan Ludden courted you for a long time, and you were in love with somebody else, a man named Phil Cochran. How long did it take for you to feel, fall out of love with Phil and in love with Alan? I had been going with Phil for about four, four and a half years, and Alan and I were booked in to do a show together up in Cape Cod. And Alan and his three kids, he was a widower, his three kids and his two poodle puppies were up there. And we, the kids all were leaning on me, too. Everybody was courting Betty, and it was, it was really lovely. Phil would come up and see the show, and he'd say, I don't like Alan Ludden. And I said, everybody likes Alan Ludden. Don't be silly. He said, no. I said, come on, Phil. Now, you've seen me play opposite a lot of people. He said, this one's different. Before I even knew it was he different, knew he knew Alan it was loved different. You. And so finally, it came down to a, a point where I wasn't in love with Alan, I didn't think. Dumb me, I'm a slow study. Uh, but I was no longer in love with Phil. So it was a, a rough transition, and, but I couldn't, I've never been the kind that could go with two guys at once. I just no. can't do that. So we finally, I had to, I said goodbye to Phil. And then it took me a year to get smart enough to say yes to Alan, which is dumb. Well, the, one of the reasons I wanted to ask you about this is there's an old-fashioned word. It's called courtship. You were courted by Alan Ludden. And I'd like you to talk a little bit about that. I there may be courted. women and men watching right now who need a reminder. You can court somebody and get them to fall in love with you and love you. I, he changed my mind. I didn't think I yeah. was in love with him at all. But I, I was passionately in love with him before he got through with it. I mean, it wasn't a case of, well, yes, he's very nice and I'll make do. None what of that. What did he do? He, what was he courtship? He thought of me, he never let me doubt for a second that I was the most important aim in his life, or at least, he, at least I believed it. I bought it, whatever he was selling. But the thing is, Bill, it didn't stop. The courtship didn't stop once we got married. He courted me until the day he got too sick mm -hmm. to do it. Uh, he'd say, you want to go out to dinner? Uh, on weekends, we're going out to dinner. We have a, a, ho a, a playroom that's not attached to the house, but he'd barbecue chicken, and we'd go out there and put records on and dance all evening, just the two of us, like idiots. What kind two of music fools. did you like to dance? Big to? band stuff, naturally. Da -da 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 sure, and it was heaven. He was a good dancer. But then other times he'd call me from work and he'd say, how about a date tonight? And he'd take me out to dinner. And he never got over that. Mm. Or he'd go to have his hair cut at the Beverly Hills Hotel, and he'd bring home an outfit on a hanger and say, this was in the window. It looked like you. And his taste was lovely. Isn't that nice? Yeah. We will have uh, part two of that interview with